Welcome to the Land Your Bet Sports Betting Show. Late night here on Tuesday, coming off four and one, baby. Nice little plus two and a half units on the night here on Tuesday. I'll be going through those bets for you guys uh, and how we did the record on the season, all of that on Wednesday, as there's another video coming out day of at 3 p.m. Eastern. That's every day. The schedule is going to be night before video, looking and breaking down the full slates. And then on Wednesday or day of games, which happens to be Wednesday tomorrow, then we get into all the best bets that I'm actually making, usually anywhere from three to five with a 10 game slate. I got to imagine I got five in there. I've got a couple strong leans in uh, for player props here, as well as the sides and totals I'll be looking at. No best bets in those yet, but the player props that I'll be making tomorrow will come out in that video. So let's go ahead and continue to follow along, subscribe to that page. Here's what we're looking at for the uh, Wednesday slate, 10 games. Chicago is the only team coming on a back-to-back after a bad loss to the Raptors, who are missing R.J. Barrett, Jakob Pertl, Manuel Quickly. A lot of guys sat for them, and uh, they still beat the Bulls in that one. They play again here on Wednesday, the Bulls do, against a really bad Hornets team, missing a bunch of guys. And then Cleveland plays on Wednesday, and they're also playing on Thursday. So we want to make sure we know who's playing when. Maybe a look-ahead spot for for Cleveland. They're playing awful uh, Detroit here, I believe, on, on this tonight uh, on Wednesday as you're watching this I'm not going to be breaking down that game right now uh, I am going to be looking at a couple other games here so let's look at the first one that I have for you guys Bulls and Hornets like I said Bulls on a back-to-back minus two and a half at Charlotte two 18 and a half totals probably right for the lack of offense that we're going to see but I mean Lamelo's probably almost definitely out he's doubtful Gordon Hayward's out Mark Williams is out and Kyle Lowry's not going to suit up for this Hornets team he'll get shipped away to a contender uh, before too long For the Bulls, no injury report yet, except for Pat Williams and Zach Levine both missed on Tuesday against the Raptors. Consider that uh, when you're looking at that fact that they might not play here on Wednesday as well. So I still like the Bulls in this one. I'm not going to spend too much on it. They're bad on no rest, as is everybody that's not named like Denver, Boston, Milwaukee, Phoenix. Everybody else is bad. Even Oklahoma City, five and three on a back to back. But after there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teams with a winning record on no rest this season. We might want to do away with these no rest situations, NBA. I know you don't like competing for airtime, but like it's a bad product. So let's get rid of these back-to-backs. Good win by the Celtics on Tuesday night on the back-to-back. Pacers tried to run them out of their own building uh, and the Celtics still held at home. That's why they, like I said, have that seven and two straight up record uh, on uh, on the season on no rest. For the Bulls, not a great team. Expect slow pace. Expect not a lot of offense because the Hornets don't have a lot of offense. And to be honest, neither do the Bulls, who I believe scored 108 points against that Raptors team, who's been just bleeding points when they play on the road, especially. So uh, not really impressive showing on offense for the Bulls. But still, like I said, like I, I chalk, whatever you want. You can call this like a stinky bet because it's only, it's too obvious almost. So it's like stinky in that it smells fishy. But it's just, I, I don't know how, in what world the Hornets can cobble together enough to, to beat the Bulls. Like, the Bulls are going to be able to defend Brandon Miller well enough, his jump shooting, um, and getting to the rim. They've been really good defending the paint. So, I, I don't know. It's not one that I, I want to put a ton of money on, but I'm probably looking at a half a unit or so on the Bulls in this one. I think we've already spent enough time on it. Game two here is the Kings at the Heat. Honestly, this is a doo-doo game, too, the way that these teams have been playing. Kings are won a couple games in a row. I should not talk so poorly about the Kings. They probably started their turnaround. We kind of called that Nate and myself, my co-host on the other show that I have. We kind of called the Kings. We're going to uh, kind of handle business. I said they're going to be the dubs and they did. They handled business against the Hawks before that. They also had a really uh, nice win recently uh, against the, uh, I believe it's the Mavericks uh, and Luca. So yeah, they're, they're looking good right now. They're, they're not really missing anybody. Sasha Vezinkov hasn't really played much. The former Euro player of the year. Uh, and then the Robinson brothers, Duncan and Orlando, they are not brothers. Uh, but Duncan Robinson, for those of you who want to call me out i did mess up that the bogdanovich uh, dudes are not brothers they're not even from the same country that one i got called out on correctly duncan and and orlando are not uh, brothers but they both named robinson and both out here moving on looking at the home and road stuff here for both of these teams sack is just a much different team as we know on the road versus when they're at home i want to say they play better defense but they really just play slightly slower and choppier and their offense is just way worse so they're kind of forced to really get back on defense um, and, and, and play transition defense, which they're pretty good at, and why they're actually pretty good on the road, because they do miss a lot of shots, and they are much worse, like I said. So the, I, I don't really like the, the over on this one. I, I do lean under, to be honest with you. This could just be the game where the Heat randomly decide to come out of their funk. They've been awful. They, they do score more at home, but let's just go right into how bad they've been over their last seven. 
losing seven straight uh and like just awful like it says here they are dead last in offense on the uh in general wherever they play 101.7 points per game allowing 118 per game as well they're taking the the uh, fewest free throw attempts they have the fourth worst rebound percentage I, I don't know what to make of it because bam's been playing everything has just been bad for them they've just been a complete slump uh in these seven games still playing at like the slow pace that they always play at you know like right, right around a 95 96 pace um so i, I kind of still lean under even though they have been scoring a few more points at home like you saw on the last slide there um, it, it, for the the Kings and Heat when they played recently, that's the recent matchup there on the left. Last season, didn't really learn anything from when they played at Miami. And because there's such a big difference between the Kings on the road and at home, I don't really know what to do with that, to be honest. Butler and Fox were both out in that matchup, Jimmy Butler and De'Aaron Fox, when they played in Miami. And when they played in SAC, like I, it says here, 232 total. That's three more points than this total. I, I don't really like it. You know, I, I like I said, I, I have a stronger lean to the under in this one with the way that the, the Heat have just been so terrible. They've been giving up a lot of points too, though. So I, I would also say I lean Kings. I, I would have to see it from the Heat pulling out of that slump to believe it um, before I would feel good enough to bet on them. So that's more of a stay away than anything. But like I said, I lean Kings and under in that one. This game I'm only bringing up because everybody out for Dallas. So I wanted to bring it up. This thing has ballooned. It was three and a half and it has just all, gotten all the way to 14 and a half now. Probably still rising because that was still rising as I was making this, uh, putting the video together right here. Luca's out. Kyrie's out. Derek Lively's out. Dante Exum's probably still out. Derek Jones Jr. probably still out. So what do we do with that? Uh, I, 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 I want to say that you can look at Tim Hardaway Jr. and Jaden Hardy. But I don't really know, man, because they're still playing Minnesota's defense. So that's why I put these two things on the slide here. On the left for the Mavs, we've got Tim Hardaway Jr. with and without Luka. With Luka, 38 games, 29 and a half minutes, 17 points a game on 14 attempts. In the six games without Luka, and Kyrie played in most of those as well, 34 minutes per game, 27 points per game on 19 field goal attempts. So he, just, he becomes the point guard, shooting guard, the whatever you want guard. He just comes out and fires, right? Uh, in the seven games uh, that Jaden Hardy has played without Luka, everything skyrockets. The 35 he played with him, right under there, right under Tim Hardaway Jr. there, uh, he's played four, 35 games with him this season, 14 minutes, seven and a half points, and a 1.7 rebounds per game. Also about one assist per game. In the seven games without Luka, everything goes up, 24 minutes per game, 10 and a half points, 4.3 rebounds. So you just, you want to look at the guys who are going to get the usage and fill the role. Nobody's filling Luka's role. Let's be very clear. Uh, Luka's role is a one of, uh, only capable of, of being accomplished by one of one. And that is him. Like I talked about before, maybe Magic and, and uh, LeBron. Those are guys you might compare to Luka, but that's the kind of company we're talking about here. So it's not like anybody's going to come in and do what he does, but there's someone's got to score for this freaking team. Um, and I kind of like a stars out bets up scenario here for the Mavs. I'm happy to keep letting this rise. This thing is going to keep going until the, the Sharps come in and bet it back down. And if this like hits about 15 and a half and then starts getting bet back down because everybody who's got money and, and a brain decides that that's way too high of a spread, then it'll go right back down. And before that happens, I kind of want to get to the under point for them. I think that this is a, a capable of like being a, a sort of look ahead game for Minnesota. Why would they care about this one? I don't know. You know, it, it, they've, they've shown a propensity to just like not try early on, especially we saw that with the Memphis game for them uh, recently as well. Right. We saw them play Memphis in a situation where they were looking ahead to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, and that was close for a while until they just came back. Now, you know, they're, they're going to be on a little bit of a road trip. There's not much to look ahead to. They're going to play Orlando after this one are the Timberwolves. Then they're going to play uh, the uh, uh, after that Houston as well. So some games they want to win. But yeah, they they probably are going to take this one lightly. So maybe there will be some stats available when we get THJ uh, props and when we get Jaden Hardy props as well. But I wanted to bring up the home defense stuff here from Minnesota because before we just start like slanging units at these uh, props for the Mavs players, let's make sure we realize that they're playing the best home defense in the league. They're winning by nine points per game at home. They have the number one D rating at home. It's a 104.6 D rating. The number two defensive rating at home is the New York Knicks at like 108.6. So four points for better per 100 possessions at, uh, on defense are the Timberwolves than any than the second place team. Like that is a very large gap. They have the number one defensive field goal percentage, like limiting teams to the lowest field goal percentage uh, on, on their offense. They have the uh, number two opposing uh, opponents three-pointers made. So they're limiting teams to the second fewest three-pointers made 
each game. I should have just phrased it that way. That's way easier to say and understand. And Dallas is taking the second highest percentage of shots from three. I, I didn't put much else on here because I don't know what you want me to do with stats that are all pertaining to what Luca's done, what, uh, you know, Kyrie's done, uh, what Derek Lively's done, what Dante Exum's done, leading the bench unit. All the numbers that I could throw at you about Dallas are all relevant to starters and guys that aren't playing in this game. So nothing to do with nothing to do there. Um, but, but either way, like, I don't think that the whole game plan for Dallas just changes. They're still going to rely on threes a ton in this game. Um, so without the ability to like have guys break down a defense like Luca can, I don't think those threes are going to be made too often against Minnesota, who is number two, three point defense in the league when they're at home. So game number four, I got one more here for you after this one. And I've got a couple of strong player prop leans in this game as well. Herb Jones is questionable for the Pellies and Tari Eason is out once more. Really a shame that Tari Eason can't play, but let's look at the quick home road stuff in this minus two and a half for New Orleans, by the way, on the spread two thirty and a half and a half on the total, right? Uh, and this is a good time for me to remind you to subscribe to that page. And once again, remind you that the schedule is officially videos coming out the night before like this one and then a player prop bets and full final best bets in the video that comes out at 3 p.m eastern day of games every day all right for the uh pellies and the rockets here home road stuff for the pels well this is actually just more recent stuff uh this isn't home road for the pellies excuse me but they've lost three in a row and four or five they haven't won two in a row in three weeks so they are not looking really good right now and the main reason is that they are just good on offense and not good on defense it's that simple the wins that they have uh in the last three weeks are not really impressive in terms of dallas without luca charlotte utah who's awful on the road golden state who they just pounded back on uh, january the 10th right so those are the wins that they have in the last three weeks and none of those impress me at all uh, i don't know if they do you but it's like i said because they're just scoring and not playing defense seventh worst defensive rating compared to the seventh best offensive rating and you want to know big reason why look at that zion and bi bi's brandon ingram when they're on the floor together you can look at two-man lineups right very easy and you can look at the rating for how these two-man lineups play and all that means is when these two guys are specifically on the floor together the th other three guys that are on the floor with brandon ingram and zion definitely vary so it's like you want to take this with a little bit of grain of salt but like these are your two best players these are the pillars of your franchise and the two of them on the floor together are a minus eight and a half net rating uh, in their last uh, three weeks in 142 minutes together on the floor. Like, that's enough of a sample size to go like minus eight and a half. That is not good. Uh, not from two of your best players. If you have serious playoff aspirations and like maybe advancing in the playoff aspirations, uh, if they have those, that's got to change fast. That's why I don't really know. I don't like them as uh, favorites on the road here. Like I'm not, I'm not really willing to lay the points for this really sporadic team against the Rockets who have been one of the best team. Like let's call them the third best team at home, at least defensive wise, especially they've got a 17, eight, uh, 17 and eight record when they play at home versus five and 16 on the road. Look at the points per game, you know, six more when they're playing at home. Oh, uh, excuse me. Yeah, five more when they're playing at home. 115 and a half versus 111. Points per game allowed are 109 at home versus 116 and a half on the road. That's the biggest difference that you notice for them is like their defense is just awesome at home and not very good on the road. And they play a little bit faster at home too, uh, which is partly why they score more points. But playing faster and giving up fewer points, pretty impressive. So if, if you believe in, in them, like, this is a good bet. The thing about the Rockets is uh, they have they were amazing to start the season, 12 and three at home to start the season, five and five in their last 10. Some nice wins, including against Milwaukee, some bad losses in, in there as well for them when they played at home in the last like, you know, 10 games that they played in their building. So I, I do lean uh, Rockets here. And to be honest, the way that they've been playing on offense um, and giving up a bit, bunch more on defense, I kind of lean over. Uh, and I look at these two guys to maybe do some of the scoring. Now, Fred Van Fleet, man, he, his prop is all the way down to 14 and a half points. We've seen him as high as 18 and a half in certain good matchups. And this is a good matchup. Uh, you look at the way that the point guards have been scoring against the Pellies in these last seven games. The Pellies are giving them far and away the most points per game. Two point guards on uh, on the other team combined for like 42 a game from the opposing team's point guards. And they played some really good ones in there. We should be really, really clear that in the last seven games, the Pellies have played uh, Shy Gilders Alexander. They played uh, Kyrie Irving twice, who just put it on them, as we saw. Uh, and a couple other guys. I'm, I'm pulling it back up. I, I don't know why that screen maxed out. But either way, like they've been playing some really good point guards. So it's not fair to just be like, oh, they've been terrible. But the, the other place that they've been giving up, oh, Steph as well scored a ton on them. The place that they've been giving up points 
is at the above the break. And that's where Fred Van Fleet lives, right? It's above the break. So you kind of expect that to continue. The thing is with Fred, man, he's just been in a shooting slump. Like he is down in the doldrums. Uh, I, I mentioned uh, Dame Lillard. I mentioned uh, Kyrie twice. Those are the guys. All right. And, and LaMelo scored a bunch on him too. Any, <clears throat> anyway, like I said about Fred, you can see here 14 points per game over his last 10 40% from the field, no bueno. 27% from deep, also super no bueno. He is taking uh, like nine to 10 threes a game in this time frame. He's got uh, eight and a half above the break threes that he's taking. You've got some two for 10 threes of three point uh, game logs in here for him. The box score is not pretty for Fred Fred right now. Uh, and FEV, he's going to pull out of it. I just don't know when. This seems like an opportune time, though. And if we're all the way down at 14 and a half, I am leaning on over on his points because the volume remains there. He's back at home in a, in a matchup where this team, even if, you know, the Pellies, it's not fair to say they've been terrible against uh, point guards just because they've been playing really good point guards. They still ain't good at defending the position uh, on the season. They are still giving up the fourth most overall. And, and I know that might be skewed a little bit by the last three, two or three weeks where they played a ton of good point guards. But at some point, you got to stop somebody. I mean, the Bulls stop really good point guards. Why is that? They have really good above the break defense. And New Orleans does not. Shout out CJ McCollum. Awful defender. Always has been. Really nice offensive game, but can't do anything above the break. For Zion, I just don't trust the man, man. I, I don't know what to do with him because he just randomly doesn't show up. That said, he loves playing this team. Um, and the Rockets are susceptible to giving up points to power forwards. They've been really good as of late, to be honest, giving up points to power forwards. Um, but they, they've given up second chance points. The, you know, Alpi shangun has been their best rebounder and really their main rebounder. Uh, they're they're going to need some better help there because Jabari rebound, uh, Jabari rebound, Jabari no rebound sometimes. Jabari Smith Jr. doesn't get bored sometimes. He just sort of disappears from the paint. And when his shot isn't working and his confidence isn't there, some shout out my boy Mech, who was talking about this with Jabari Smith Jr. You watch him play. If he doesn't get his shot falling, then he just kind of like tunes out. He's not going to the rim. He's not aggressive. Um, and, and when that's the case, Zion's going to eat in that one. Uh, I don't, I'm not making a Zion eating joke. I'll move past it. But Zion's going to do really well. Uh, on the second chance points, he has eight boards per game in the last uh, two games that he's played against this team this season. He's averaging 26 a game in those two games with a 62% field goal percentage. And what you like about Zion is he's going to the rim because he's got the 10 and a half free throw attempts. He went 10 and 11 free throw attempts in the first two games uh, that he played against the Rockets this season with those eight boards, four of them, uh, eight boards a game. And four of that, uh, two of them each game have been offensive boards. So I like the fact that he's getting defensive boards because that means he's active down low. It also means that on offense, he is attacking the rim. And that's what you need to do against this uh, Rockets team because they do have really good perimeter defense and have like limited threes really well, etc. So Zion's a really good archetype to uh, a player to go in and, and kind of body this team. And I would feel good about him getting the points. They're at 22 and a half. So they remain kind of low for us. All right, last game that I'm talking about here before we close things out. Thunder are hosting the Nuggets, and it's plus one and a half for the Nuggets, minus one for the Thunder. I think there's some arbitrage opportunities that might be gone by uh, the morning time, but arbitrage opportunity would be where like you can get the Thunder at minus one, and you can also get the Thunder at plus one and a half, and then you can take both, and you can get yourself a guaranteed win if you're willing to shell out a ton of money uh, and, and and make sure that like you you uh, put the correct amount on each bet to guarantee yourself money. That's arbitrage betting, which we'll talk about another time. But look who's out for the Thunder. Everybody. Lou Dort, questionable. SGA, questionable. Chet is questionable. Isaiah Joe, shooter, questionable. J-Dub, Jalen Williams is questionable. Also, that one dude, Nikola Jokic, is questionable for the Nuggets. So, not really sure what to do with this. So, let's look at what I've got here for some key info that's relevant to this. Jokic has only missed one game this season. Uh, and in that one, it was the R. Jax and DeAndre Jordan turn back the clock game, if you remember, against the Clippers, which was awesome to watch. They were throwing lobs to each other like they were back on the Clippers, honestly, back in like seven, eight years ago. Um, that was awesome to watch. That's not going to be the case here. There was no Jamal Murray. That was everybody sitting for the Nuggets. The only guy that we care about right now that's actually on the injury report for the Nuggets is Nikola Jokic. He is the, the the center of the galaxy, obviously. So, like, if he's not in, everything changes. We need to know what's going on with Jokic before we can do much. I will say the Thunder are 2-1 and one against this team on the season. Only one game was with full squads. It was awesome. It was a Saturday night. Oklahoma City won in Denver, 118-117. to 117, In the midst of Denver not playing that well at home. So... That is something to consider uh, that the, the the Thunder do seem to like really, really want to bring it against 
big bro, if you will, in the Denver Nuggets who have kind of owned them is their division rivals, right? So this would be a, a pretty good time to uh, to lean into the thunder if early if Jokic is sitting. This feels like a really good one. Uh, I'm not going to just count out guys like the, Jamal Murray and, and company, but the other thing is, even if Jokic doesn't play, he's probably the equivalent of a Lou Dort. SGA is mean. Like, let's say everybody on there not named SGA combined is as valuable as Nicole Jokic. But I should also separate J Dub from that because Jalen Williams not playing for this team is also massive. Like, he is the second best player. Second or third best player, he and Chet are pretty equally important, but J-Dub is a more polished player at this point that can do more, can pull this team out of tough situations on offense and defense. Like, Chet can do a lot of awesome stuff, but he can get bodied. And if you just sort of knock him off, excuse me, knock him off his path as he's trying to get to the basket, he becomes a little bit more limited. So, uh, like, that, that's really it for the key info for this one for now. I'll be le uh, leaning into some bets if uh, we can find get, finally get an injury report tomorrow and start to understand who is not and who is not playing for uh, the Thunder and for the Nuggets because if Jokic is out, man, such a big deal. But that is all the time I have for you guys in this one. Appreciate everybody following along. Subscribe to that page if you would uh, and like this video. Super helpful. I'm also bringing you uh, the best bets on shorts. We are now 23 and 11. Hit that tonight with Jonathan Kaminga. He was in the video as well. So if you're watching these videos, all good. Follow along on the uh, social medias, if you would, as well. At Land Your Bets on Twitter. Still making sure I'm giving out bets live. Some stuff that's coming out there when I don't have it time to get it into the videos because I want to get these videos out by 3 p.m. Eastern every day. I have been getting them out by like 3.20, to be honest with you, but I'm, I'm shooting for three. Appreciate everybody, for real. Best of luck here on Wednesday. On Wednesday, See you again at 3 p.m for the second and final round of the best bets and play of props that we'll have up. And until I do see you then, happy betting.